Welcome back to Secret Message TV. I'm your host, John Kelly. The father of exopolitics, Alfred Lambermont Weber, is calling for a boycott, a consumer boycott, against examiner.com. Alfred Lambermont Weber is known as the founding father of exopolitics. His book, Exopolitics, Politics, Government, and Law in the Universe, is the evolution of his groundbreaking work as a futurist at the Stanford Research Institute where, in 1977, he directed a proposed extraterrestrial communication study project for the Carter White House. I'm joined by Alfred Lambermont Weber. Alfred, it's always great to speak with you. Thank you for joining me on Secret Message TV. John, I'm very happy to be, be with you again. Alfred, w w tell me more about this proposed consumer boycott of examiner.com. What was the genesis of this initiative and uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, um, I was very surprised uh, by a development which at one level hit me as a journalist in a particular way in that uh, my franchise at examiner.com as the Seattle Exopolitics Examiner, which I've done for the last couple of years, uh, and to where I was among the highest ranking and most read political reporters at examiner.com, outranking people who would read about Barack Obama and the world leaders. And uh, on a good month, I'd be read by 400,000 people a month. And um, all of my articles had multiple whistleblowers, multiple sources independently checked, and I had lots of caveats in the field of exopolitics, which is um, relations among intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. And I broke a number of significant stories. Uh, the most, one of the most significant, of which I was one of the last stories I broke on examiner.com, which I think is what caused uh, examiner in a very kind of a sneaky way, in the same sneaky way that intelligence agencies uh, prey upon and destroy civilians' economic. Uh, businesses and kind of uh, uh, shut down uh, fountains of free information. And that was the story with uh, multiple whistleblowers, um, eyewitnesses Andrew D. Bishago and William Brett Stillings, and also corroborative witnesses Laura Eisenhower and uh, others, uh, that the current U.S. President, Barack H. Obama, uh, a.k.a. Barry Satoro, had been part of the CIA secret Mars program starting in 1980, where he was trained at a three-week Mars training program at the College of the Siskiyous in 1980, in the summer of 1980, along with uh, and Andrew D. Bishago a former uh, DARPA Project Pegasus participant and a current attorney in the state of Washington, and William Brett Stillings, and also uh, another participant in that in that class was um, the current director of DARPA, Regina Dugan. Now, Barack Obama, along with these other people. Chicago, Dugan, and Sillings went on to teleport to Mars as part of the CIA secret Mars visitation and occupation program. Uh, and this is probably one of the most deeply held secrets, uh, current secrets of the U.S. government and of the White House regime. We had also reported that using uh, quantum access, uh, Tesla-based quantum access teleportation and time travel technologies developed in the 1968 to 71 
Project Pegasus, a number of U.S. presidents, including George H.W. Bush, this Bush Sr., George W. Bush, Bush Jr., and Barack Obama, have been pre-identified as U.S. and informed in advance of their presidency. And we have eyewitnesses uh, to the fact that Barack Obama, in 1982, already knew that he was destined to be president and had been pre-informed to be president. Uh, and the, the, the net effect of that is that the U.S. presidency has, in effect, been taken over by the CIA. So we surfaced all of this on examiner.com and then took off on a two-week, actually, I, I circumnavigated the globe for the first time. I left uh, my office here in Vancouver, British Columbia, on November 17, 2011. And from uh, November uh, 18th through uh, the following week, I was in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia as a judge on the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, where we found former U.S. President George W. Bush and former U.K. Prime Minister Tony Blair guilty of crimes against peace, which is the most serious of war crimes. That's like the Nuremberg-type war crime, where Hitler started a, an aggressive war, which slave let 25 million people dead. Well, George W. Bush started deceptively an unjustified war of aggression, which left 1.4 million Iraqis dead. So that verdict came down on November 22, 2011, the, the 48th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963 where we now have photographic evidence of George W. Bush's father, George H. W. Bush, in Dealey Plaza, standing in front of the Texas School Board Depository. He was then a, a um, CIA operative, and he was there as a coordinator of the assassination. So here we have sort of karmic justice that 48 years later, we were able at least to find his uh, his son guilty as charged of the crime of crimes against peace. Well, that verdict came down on November 22nd. Then I flew to South Africa to participate in the uh, in Johannesburg at Witt University, the UFO Science and Consciousness Conference convened by researcher Michael Tellinger. And that went very well. And after that, we went on to Adam's calendar, uh, which is the site that 280,000 years ago, uh, the Anunnaki ruler Anki landed and built this vast sort of free energy device for teleporting the gold that the Anunnaki were mining off planet to their spaceships or to their distant planet X. On November 30th, I received a communication uh, stating that Examiner was doing an audit of my articles suddenly. And here I was, the highest ranking, one of the highest ranking political reporters in North America. And what I had just published was an article outing the current president of the United States. And I just participated as a judge in a verdict finding the President of the United States immediately preceding him, both of whom are CIA operatives under time travel instruction and pre-identification, and finding him guilty of, of war crimes. So suddenly it's as though some entity that's very expert in, in bringing down uh, journalists and and destroying economic entities took my examiner column and brought down the about the 30 most recent articles and made a total jumble of it and then they said well 
Uh, this audit is going to do is going to continue until December 5th. Curiously, that that would be the first day that I would be back in my office after my trip. So obviously, this was done with a huge amount of premeditation and intelligence as to what my trip would be and when I would be back in in my office. So there I was out in. Uh, actually, I was out in the Hong Kong airport when I received. Uh, a notification of this, and uh, I I quickly uh, began to repost some of the more important articles, such as the Obama Mars article, on my regular website exopolitics.com, and I did that in a 24-hour layover at the Hong Kong airport en route to South Africa. Now, when I got back uh, to North America, I noticed that on December 6th, the day after the supposed audit took place, uh, another exopolitics examiner, Dr. Michael Sala, the Honolulu exopolitics examiner, published an article on his account. And I said, gee, his, his account isn't being audited, and none of his articles have been taken down. So I, I wrote the um, the P director of the Pacific region. The, these guys are just shills or tools. His name is Matt Sandy. He's graduated from University of Vermont in 2004 with a bachelor's degree in English and has kind of a thin resume. He's bounced around from job to job. But, you know, that's what they do in these little cubby holes. So, um, and he, and I said, what's going on? I mean, Michael Sala hasn't been audited at all, and my thing has been audited. Well, within about half an hour, I received a response saying, oh, uh, your your account has been audited, and we are terminating your account uh, as Seattle Exopolitics Examiner because you have violated uh, our our contractual provision saying that you will not knowingly publish articles that contain false, untrue, and misleading, quote, end of quote, fraudulent, quote, end of quote, materials. So clearly they were fraudulently, examiner.com was fraudulently using what they call in the law a reversal against me, saying that because I had outed the president using President Barack Obama using multiple whistleblowers as having been on Mars, well, then my articles must be false. And all of my articles that were on examiner.com and that are, are now at www.exopolitics.com and we're in the process of transferring them over. So I ask our readership to be patient while we d do that. Well, that's what occurred. Now, uh, I, uh, what that is, in my judgment, is a frontal assault on the truth movement, because what I was able to provide over the last two years is a platform for whistleblowers from the national security state who came forward at great risk to their own lives. People like Michael Ralph, former U.S. serviceman, who spent 20 years as a, as a member of the security staff of the secret U.S. facilities on Mars from 1976 to 1996. People like Andrew D. Bashago, who uh, uh, is a member and a participant of Project Pegasus, involved in the development of teleportation and time travel, uh, whose uh, uh, contributions uh, as a whistleblower are monumental and historical, uh, especially in the areas of quantum access, time travel, teleportation, which the US government has had for 40 years, which we did not know of, uh, were it not for people like Andy and like Michael Ralph, um, and also the issue of life on Mars. Um, Andrew Bashago was, was able to successfully document 
um, in a scientific fashion, the uh, different species of humanoids, animals, uh, statues and structures on the surface of Mars using the NASA Mars rovers photographs and thereby beginning to uncover the Mars cover-up, the life on Mars cover-up by NASA. Uh, essentially, there's a strategic occupation of Mars going on now by the U.S. government. There's a colonization going on by the U.S. government based on a false and misleading strategic threat assessment. And part of what has come out is that U.S. President Barack Obama both read, along with um, current DARPA uh, director and Andrew the whistleblower, they both read the 10,000-page uh, secret threat assessment to Earth from the Martian civilization. They were tasked with learning the Martian language. Barack Obama was, Regina Dugan was, Andrew Bashago was, and they were asked to write a threat assessment. And um, uh, Andrew Bashago wrote a reasonable assessment, which is that if you're starting to occupy uh, Mars against their wishes, well, you might have some counterattacks, but this is only natural, but that the Martians are not hostile. And counter to that, the current director of DARPA, Regina Dugan, took the militarist line, uh, the Defense Department and Defense Contractors line, that the Martians are hostile. And uh, Barack Obama kind of played it, then called Barry Satoro, kind of played it closely to his chest and didn't go one way or the other. So essentially, we have a slick CIA, lifelong CIA operative, third generation, whose grandparents were CIA operatives, whose parents were CIA operatives, that is, his supposed father. There's a lot of research that Barack Obama's actual biological father may be someone like Malcolm X. And uh, you have in the person of Barack Obama a consummate liar, a person who's trying to position himself as a leftist and then as a centrist and then as a populist, all the why, while representing the Illuminati financial bloodlines of Wall Street and the City of London banking and ultimately the British Crown and the British aristocrats. He also may be a Manchurian candidate in the sense that he may well be still under MK Ultra programming from uh, his from he, he, those 30 years of uh, uh, training to be U.S. president as a covert CIA agent. And the proof of that occurred uh, this year on May 24, 2011, happens to be my birthday, so I paid attention to it, when uh, Barack Obama was one of three persons in current history, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, the Pope, Pope Ratzinger, and Barack Obama, who were allowed to t speak in Westminster Hall in London. And he went up there to speak, and there's video on YouTube which, which shows and deconstructs Barack Obama being uh, uh, teleguided and kind of uh, activated in, with MemK Ultra uh, mind control hand signals by the archbishops there in attendance at Westminster Hall who are all very expert in uh, occult MK Ultra uh, uh, mind control programming. So that's the essence of the president. Uh, we haven't fully determined, and we're still going, who exactly gave the order. It's pretty deeply cloaked 
to bring down my column, but it was very long in the planning because it occurred in the course of these two week um, trip. While I was in South Africa, George W. Bush, uh, who had just been found to be uh, guilty of the crimes against peace, was deployed by the CIA on a, quote, goodwill mission to three African countries, uh, it, it kind of in a, in a counter psyops. So that's, that's the sort of planning here. So this is a very deeply done hit. And uh, uh, now the idea of the consumer boycott came about this way. It actually came about from our readers and uh, 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 and who 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 came forward a very uh, uh, sig significant reader, uh, uh, my colleague uh, Andrew D. Bishago actually contacted me and said, I think that this is cause for a consumer boycott. And the reason is, and I think that in my statement, which I've published at exopolitics.com, examiner.com is actually founded by a billionaire, a Denver-based billionaire, and it's kind of one of these sweatshop rags where the uh, more than 55,000 examiners are paid a pittance and all the profits go up to the billionaire and it's all kind of mind control stuff. And if you really come out, well then you're shut down as I was. And the, the way that examiner makes its money is that examiner is paid by its advertisers for every click through. I mean, every time anybody clicks through to examiner.com, they get money. So what we're saying is just, hey, it's real easy. Just avoid it. Just don't even go there. Tell all your friends. Make it go viral. Just avoid examiner.com. It's poison. It's an Illuminati uh, uh, sweatshop. Uh, rag on the internet that is is doing the worst and so that's kind of the background yeah uh, you know on its face I, I've read um, I've read them the email that you received from mr. Sandy and on its face value their, their claim uh, regarding uh, uh, knowingly publishing uh, materials that were uh, considered to be uh, lies uh, misleading or fraud uh, it, it's interesting to dissect that in terms of uh, by what means was examiner.com uh, management able to determine how it was that the materials you published were, were false and by what means did they determine that you were, were in a state of knowing that they were false? By, by what means were they able to de make these determinations in the first place? It, it seems, it seems a, a fairly wide open question. Uh, it, 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 in my imagination, I, I think about the uh, encounter between Andrew Bishago and Major Ed Dames on Coast to Coast in uh, November when Major Ed Dames declared that there was no such program as the secret Mars programs that uh, Andrew Bishago was describing. A and uh, Mr. Bishago countered by saying that due to the uh, nature of compartmentalization used to sequester uh, knowledge of these kinds of programs in the U.S. government and the secret government and the black budget programs, uh, it would be impossible for any individual to, uh, to make such a declaration uh, regarding uh, the nature of by, by you know de facto compartmentalized programs no one individual will be in a position to make such claims so how is it that examiner uh, can can possibly uh, make such claims and, and remain credible it's it's the question seems wide open to me yeah yeah there there's no uh, specificity there were no specific articles pointed to uh, it was just a a a blanket statement made by a person with a BA with no particular expertise. We went back on LinkedIn and looked up his bio, Matthew Sandy, and it's very thin. It's kind of a guy who hopscotch, kind of jumped from job to job. And now he's sitting in a cubicle at examiner.com, uh, carrying out targeted hits against journalists on, be on behalf of unknown interests. 
so uh, uh, and and as you say, uh, as an attorney, I can say two things. Number one, that and I said this in my statement that I reserved all of my legal rights. I have full legal rights against the examiner here. I could proceed against them under the tort of malicious interference with business. And I could proceed against them under the tort of libel and slander. However, that would just tie me up in the courts with a huge amount of resources. They would toss it to their corporate lawyers and it would just go into a black hole. Uh, so I think that making this and bringing it to public attention is a much healthier way to go. Secondly, when I wrote my articles, I wrote them also from the point of view of an attorney. And I was made sure in each article to include caveats, because we're dealing with exopolitics, which is the science of relations among intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. And I had two series of articles, for example, on reported, quote, galactic governance councils, the Council of Eight and the Andromeda Council. Well, I was very clear to say these are working hypotheses and these can be justified. Uh, you know, we can see whether these working hypotheses are actually valid by looking at the following, following correlations. For example, the Council of Eight said in a published book by former uh, NORAD officer, Stanley Fulham, which he published in the summer of 2010, that on October 13th, 2010, the Council of Eight UFOs would decloak themselves over New York. And in fact, there were huge amounts of very large over New York. Uh, that, that I, I reported that. Uh, the uh, the um, Illuminati press tried to dismiss them, saying that they were balloons, which they clearly weren't. Uh, also, the and drama to council uh, were able to give me in advance for a week the exact location of purported reptilian undersea bases in the East China Sea and they gave me the exact location and a week later there were earthquakes in that location which they ascribed uh, to the destruction of the undersea bases in the East China Sea also earlier in the Gulf of Aden, de destroying uh, those undersea bases uh, that had been allegedly uh, creating conflict through frequency generators in Asia for the last uh, 3,000 years and in the Middle East for the last 5,000 years. And on August 23rd, 2011, I uh, uh, there was um, uh, a earthquake felt from Virginia to Ottawa, Canada, which was at 0.1 kil kilometer a depth, a very shallow earthquake. It should have been at six kilometers, and that was the signature, purportedly, of the uh, advanced sonic beam weapons of these advanced extraterrestrials destroying some of the gray and reptilian underground bases that had kept the U.S. government in mind control. So these are some of the subjects of exopolitics uh, Examiner knew full well when they uh, opened up Seattle Exopolitics, what Exopolitics was. So uh, uh, I find their allegations of fraud in effect, a cover uh, for their fraud, which was done targeted. It's as though it was done by intelligence agencies who knew exactly where I was going, when I was going, where I would be uh, traveling around the world from the Malaysia Tribunal to South Africa and, and uh, gave no particulars whatsoever. Uh, so, uh, in a court of law, I would win hands down. 
Well, you know, not only does their judgment appear to be arbitrary, uh, and an arbitrary interpretation of, of their posted rules of publication, but it also seems prejudicial in the sense, as you cited, that uh, Dr. Michael Sala uh, continues to uh, publish his uh, exopolitics column free of audit, uh, free of censorship. Uh, it, it, you know, the letter from Matt Sandy stated that your topic was no longer the represent the type of content that Examiner.com wanted to be associated with, but why do they retain the Honolulu Exopolitics Examiner if those, in fact, are, are the conditions? Well, exactly, and even more, in the original letter to me, they said that they were reviewing all Exopolitics uh, accounts and that Exopolitics accounts would be suspended during that period. Well, Michael Sala wasn't suspended during that period. So it, it, it's all phony. And so people like Matt Soundy are just, you know, uh, tools, flunkies that are tasked under op something like Operation Mockingbird, which g goes back to the 1950s, where they have a CIA operative, a double agent who is, in fact, a an intelligence officer who then uh, carries out intelligence functions in censoring the news and in getting rid of reporters, and he's just carrying out orders. I mean, this is, this is about as bad as Nazi Germany. This is about as bad as any of the iconically bad regimes in history. Now, it's not about me. This is, this is people who are being denied the truth. So therefore, since we're entering 2012, uh, you know, truth is coming back with a vengeance. And we're now announcing a conference entitled, Who is Barack Obama? Uh, that'll be carried out in 2012. Uh, the date and the venue to be announced, it may be in Washington, D.C., at which a lot of this information will be coming out so that people can understand that the current president of the United States is not a leader. He's a lifelong CIA operative uh, who is a consummate liar and who has uh, spent his youth being trained to be president by the CIA, who never went to Columbia University, who uh, spent his time in the CIA secret Mars program, and now has the gumption and the, the, the utter fraudulent approach to say that in his most recent response to the extraterrestrial petition that, oh, no, we have no proof of extraterrestrials, whereas as an 18-year-old, he was tasked to learn the Martian language, and he was tasked to write a threat assessment of the Martian civilization toward Earth. What a fraud. What an utter liar and a fraud in this virtual matrix reality attempted to be manufactured by the Illuminati and the Intel. This is why the second half of my visit, which was at South Africa, where we went to Adam's Calendar, which is the location where 280,000 years ago or so, uh, the Anunnaki leader, Enki, landed and uh, created this vast uh, kind of uh, free energy machine of uh, uh, sort of these stone circles and in, in uh, sacred geometry to teleport this gold up. We actually went back. Uh, my colleague, Laura Eisenhower, said, we're back here at the scene of the crime. And it was at that point that uh, with the Anunnaki interloping and intervention and violation of the law of non-intervention, that this planet entered a phase where the Anunnaki planetary rulers the current version of which is the British crown. I mean, all these bloodlines come down from the Anunnaki rulers. Uh, Elizabeth Windsor, who's now grooming her grandson, Prince William, to be 
the future version of the Anunnaki planetary ruler. Um, and concurrently, 20,000 years ago, and most intensively starting about 97,000 years ago, because the Anunnaki understood that our t Homo sapiens was originally designed by a consortium of uh, advanced ethical human civilizations like the Pleiadians to be a 12 strand DNA light being in the third dimension, they were able to kind of devolve our DNA using sound. And that's the way that we were brought down to two strand DNA, which we are currently. And that's the regime that the current Anunnaki rulers, they're in their legacy as the Anunnaki Illuminati uh, with their institutions like the CIA, the alphabet agencies, the banks, the banksters, Wall Street, C City of London, want to keep us as the way slaves. And in a way, we saw back there at the scene of the crime at Adam's calendar that nothing has changed in 2000, 280,000 years. And that's why on 11-11-11, the government of South Africa shut down Adam's calendar and we went in and opened it up. So uh, we'll be coming out shortly with an official trailer to a film called Awakening, Adam's Calendar, that will be out in 2012, exposing this 280-year, 1,000-year cycle of exploitation and ending it. And hopefully... Uh, it's events like, like this. Hopefully, this is the end of events like this, of attempted suppression by the remnants of the Anunnaki occupation. Now, uh, going back to the uh, state of affairs at, at uh, companies like Examiner.com, which are promoting this uh, journalism 2.0, the, the advent of the citizen journalist, uh, is it fair to say, in your opinion, that there are p people uh, inside that organization operating as, as agents of uh, an intelligence agency uh, agenda? I, I, I mean, it seems to me that just from the wording of their communique to you, uh, that there's cer certainly a, 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 s a severe level of incompetence in presenting their case against you, and yet, uh, on, on the other hand, it seems uh, from your description of, of events, the time of event, timeline of events and, and the high level of coordination involved in, in, uh, in, in bringing about the, uh, the, the, uh, the censorship of your column, well, that seems to be a, a showcase of, of uh, what we could would describe as an economic hit job. Uh, so, so is, is it, in your opinion, uh, there, are, are there people who are acting as agents of uh, intel, intelligence uh, departments in the U.S. government within examiner.com? Yeah, you know, and this is nothing new. This goes back to the 1950s and has been well documented under Operation Mockingbird. And that is that you have double agents from the intelligence agency who are deployed in major newspapers and in major media who who act as gatekeepers for the information they look like editors but they really are intelligence agencies and then you just have a bunch of flunkies like max sandy who take orders and do the particular hit i mean here's a guy who got his ba from in english from university of vermont who can't put together a straight sentence and, uh, you know, he just probably driving to work in his cubicle and they say, take, take this guy out. And, you know, that's what they did by the evidence, because it really is the most clumsy job I've ever seen. I mean, my God, it's just so, well, let's let's get this uh, the two weeks, uh, you know, let's do it this way. And meanwhile, George W. Bush is deployed to three African countries whereas he had just been adjudged uh, guilty of war crimes while I was in Africa. And uh, while I was, we were sitting in judgment of Malaysia, Barack Obama meets with the prime minister of Malaysia. 
What's that about? This is how the Illuminati Anunnaki structure works. They actually plan their stuff around our stuff. Everything is in reverse. So they're on the way out, they're on the run, and now they have no more fourth dimensional backup if what the Galactic Governance Councils, like the Andromeda Council, tell us is true, that the undersea, uh, that the war with the Orion Greys and the Draco Reptilians, which the war in space from 2001, from the 9-11 event, which was actually a fourth dimensional Orion Grey and Draco Reptilian attack on the planet to bring us into a catastrophic timeline. Uh, now that that war has been won as of the beginning of 2011, and we're sort of mopping up with the bases, the Anunnaki Illuminati power structure, you know, whose figureheads are Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Tony Blair, the, the Wall Street banksters, the city of London banksters, they have no more fourth dimensional backup. So they're on the run. And uh, my perspective is we're now in 2011. I would expect that in 2016, <coughs> If not, you know, maybe 2020, we will have a revolution in the U.S. and in the planet, and all that sort of bottom feedings, you know, uh, uh, farm team will be out, and the whole culture, uh, archonic culture, that feeds on negativity and set separation and trying to shut down things like the journalistic platform that I pro provide for whistleblowers, which is ongoing at Exopolitics TV, Exopolitics.com. Nothing has changed. I'm just changing platforms to a light based platform and and uh we are going forward. So uh these uh, th there are consequences for societies that won't challenge a status quo where uh, you have institutions like the Federal Reserve actively bailing out uh, banks in foreign countries uh, to the tunes of uh, I don't know if it was seven or t ten trillion dollars of unaccounted monies. Uh, the the ninety nine percent uh, represented by the Occupy movement are are protesting in major cities throughout the world, although. Uh, a, a number of these protests have been effectively shut down uh, mm -hmm. due to uh, judgments in, in, in uh, local courts. Th those judgments appear to be uh, coordinated. Apparently, the Department of Homeland Security in the United States was engaging uh, uh, the, the mayors of numerous cities in the United States in, in uh, group calls to, to strategize and, and dis discuss means to uh, end the Occupy movement in, in the city of London. Uh, the police were distributing flyers most recently, de declaring the the London Occupy participants, uh, uh, listing them as terrorists. So, so there are there are consequences for societies that persist in uh, in denial, that persist in these uh, exclusive agendas, uh, where platforms, uh, you know, for journalism that is supposed to be uh, in the in the public interest, are are, are bent. And, and reshaped in in, uh, in the interests of, of of a select few. What 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 do you see as the long term consequences of society for society in the West if we do not uh, seek uh, seek radical changes in our philosophical outlook and in our practices with regards to these questions? Yeah, uh, 2012 has been designated quote the end game. Uh, in the New World Order political rollout. And so uh, what, what we have now is all sectors of the, the New World Order globalist game, be it in North America, in the U.S., in, in the U.K., is to attempt to impose domestic uh, police states and to shut down uh, the fourth estate journalism, uh, to shut down civil liberties, to build concentration camps. Uh, when push comes to shove, the question is whether that is going to happen. I personally don't think that it is going to 
happen, that there's a large enough mass where the national security state uh, uh, will not have the wherewithal for this to happen. Why do I say that? This is where the science of exopolitics gives the answer. And uh, the, the science of exopolitics is of relations among intelligent civilizations in the multiverse. And what we call the New World Order, what we call fascism, were in fact political agendas that were manipulated from the fourth dimension by an attempted Orion Gray extraterrestrial and Draco reptilian takeover of the planet. The first um, uh, secret agreements uh, between the Grays, the Orion Grays and Draco reptilians and the U.S. government were signed in 1934 with the Roosevelt administration aboard a U.S. Navy warship in Balboa, Panama and with the Third Reich shortly thereafter, Germany. So uh, we have been battling uh, uh, entities from the fourth dimension since then. That is no longer the case. We have ample now, ample upper dimensional advanced extraterrestrial civilizations that are aiding us along with ample cosmic forces. Um, if we look at what uh, scientist Dr. Carl Johann Kalman at the University of Washington is saying that uh, as of October 28th of this year, the interdimensional portal at the core of our universe is broadcasting waves of unity consciousness. And that means that any system that is in duality consciousness, such as, you know, an attempt to impose fascist di di dictatorships is going to fail. We know that. We know that following uh, uh, 2015 or 2016, uh, there is going to be a virtual re-evolution, and I say re-evolution rather than a revolution, uh, be because it involves transformational elements and because it comes from cosmic love and unity consciousness rather than from violence and hate. Uh, in, in North America and in the world with the collapse of the Anunnaki, the remnants of the Anunnaki hierarchy, which go back 280,000 years, the remnants of the Illuminati plans. Uh, and I would predict that by 2025, we are going to have a sustainable uh, uh, society, sustainable, new energy-based, um, peaceful, and multidimensional, uh, universe-focused, multi multiverse-focused uh, society on this planet. So uh, from your description, events on the ground, such as uh, examiner.com canceling your column or uh, the struggles, the class struggles depicted in the Occupy movement versus the 1% or the uh, numerous wars uh, being engaged uh, in the drone strikes or wars on the ground throughout the world, uh, th these are s symptoms of struggles uh, that are dimensional in nature or what some people might describe as a form of spiritual warfare. Yes, yes. Uh, our new film, which will be out, and be on the lookout for the official trailer, which will be coming out shortly, of uh, Awakening uh, Adam's Calendar uh, on November 28, 2011. A group of us, because the South African government had shut down Adam's Calendar and placed guards there, a group of us actually went and occupied Alan's Adam's calendar. We went in the early morn, uh, covered by a mist. The guards didn't get there till late a.m., so we got there much earlier than that. And there's a whole story to that. And by us going back to the original scene of the crime, of the Anunnaki occupation and occupying it and liberating it for humanity, 
I think that that's why, you know, you're, you're, you're finding all of their reaction. Oh, let's shut Weber down. You know? Well, guys, guess what? <laughs> you can't do it. It's done. The horse is out of the barn. So we're, 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 we're watching a society led by a, a broken agenda, a, a failed uh, philosophy that apparently these elite have been trying for thousands and thousands of years to enforce uh, some kind of uh, total dominance or control uh, of the rest of humanity. But uh, 2012, although they envision it as the year of the, the, the police state, so to speak, uh, we're actually looking at a, a, a different uh, type of future coming across the horizon, and, and we're going to have to hold out some hope, as well as uh, take some initiative on our, our, our own part, our own roles in bringing that better future forwards. Yes, objectively, scientifically, we are not on a catastrophic timeline headed toward world dystopia. We are on a positive timeline. Time exists in sort of parallel timelines, and if we look at negative timelines, say like a like lanes on a su on a super highway, and if toward this side they would be negative timelines with hell on earth being the the farthest lane on the left, and on this side positive timelines just sort of paradise on earth being the lane on the right. We are moving toward positive timelines objectively and, and so no matter what means through fear and intimidation the Anunnaki structure strives to stay in power it's just memes and the objective reality is that that these 280,000 years of Anunnaki occupation are over and we're in a new era of transition and uh, we're here to announce that. And uh, it may be messy, but all re evolutions are. And so by 2015 or 2016, uh, it's all of us, the 99%, that will be running the ship. And uh, just watch over the next four years, the rats scurry, <laughs> scurry. All they're going to be doing is scurrying because that's all they know how to do. You know, as they say, only rats run in rat races. Alfred Lambermont Weber, the founding father of Exopolitics, calling for a consumer boycott, calling for consumers to occupy a boycott of the website examiner.com, which has just announced that they have canceled his column, the uh, much uh, the, the distinguished Seattle ex Exopolitics Examiner .com that has brought forward many uh, amazing whistleblower testimonies that is very professionally written. One of the most popular national political writers for Examiner.com is, is moving on from that site uh, under uh, what appears to be uh, an economic and intelligence agency hit against his profound words of truth has been joining us, and I encourage you to follow up with Alfred Lambermont Weber uh, at his websites, exopolitics.com. On YouTube, you can watch him on Exopolitics TV. I'm John Kelly, and I am the host for Secret Message TV. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to many more uh, interviews and discussions with Alfred Lambermont Weber. Thank you, Alfred, for joining us on today's show.